We animals actually have very few basic needs. Mm, sleeping. Reproducing. Breathing. Drinking at times. Running away if necessary. And above all, eating, eating, eating. We animals eat to survive. It's the most basic, the most fundamental instinct. Luckily, our planet is a gigantic restaurant where everything eats and everything gets eaten, from the waiter to the serving tray. Every day, half the planet gets eaten up. Plants, flowers, fruits, fish, birds. Untold tons of living things are devoured swallowed, gulped down by millions and millions of other hungry creatures. The diners at the restaurant Earth. The funny thing about this restaurant is we're all clients and food at the same time. Of course, everyone eats their own way with varying table manners. And the daily menus are quite varied. Mm. Cold cuts are very common and sought after dishes. And in nature, they're produced fresh daily. Lions and vultures form a culinary team. They always eat together. Sooner or later, something will die. But surprise, the lion itself is on the menu today. This lion was old and sick. Not even the queen of the jungle can escape her fate, eaten by carrion feeders descending from the sky. Vultures are always on time for a dinner date. There's no time to waste. The last one there gets no rotten meat. It looks like a chaotic mess of a meal, but it's actually not. Each species of vulture is an expert at eating a different cold cut, allowing them all to share a banquet at the same time, each one eating the part it likes best. Gregarious vultures, the most common, like the white-backed vulture, are the ones that eat the most. They ingest soft meat and viscera, and more than a hundred may gather around a single corpse. Their beak, strong, large and thin, is capable of cutting through the hide and penetrate the body cavity to eat it from the inside out. The white-headed vulture stands out among the common vultures. Its palate is a bit unrefined, as it likes the hard, leathery parts. Its powerful beak can cut through tendons and hide, and that's exactly what it's going to have for dinner, a nice, thick strip of hide. It's happy to chew on the tough skin, while the common vultures are still working on eating up the old lion's muscle and organs. But there are still more vultures invited to this particular banquet. The smallest and weakest, the hooded vultures, with a delicate beak moving around the area. They have a smaller, weaker beak. Unable to break through the hide, they take advantage of any little scraps and leftovers they see. All of them together make the corpse disappear in just a few hours. The lion doesn't have time to rot. Far from the African savanna, sea turtles arrive with a shipment of eggs that will provide a delicious treat for the customers. Olive Ridley sea turtles arrive at the beach by the thousands in the afternoon. But they're not here to get a tan or for dinner. Their mission is to lay the next generation of eggs.
They'll only be on dry land for an hour, but the effort is overwhelming. Each of them must drag her heavy body and dig a nest in the sand to deposit more than a hundred eggs. That means it's lunchtime for the black vultures. They follow the turtles and watch them, waiting to fill their bellies with the fresh laid eggs. It must be annoying and disturbing for the turtles to be surrounded by a bunch of vultures who won't stop bothering them. Actually, the black vultures don't steal the eggs. They just eat the ones the turtle herself tosses aside as it digs over another turtle's nest. They constantly bicker and fight over every bite, but fresh turtle eggs are well worth the effort. After all, this delicatessen is only open a few days a year. On the most popular beaches where the turtles nest, about 20% of their eggs are lost each season due to overlapping nests. There are lots of beach regulars like the black vultures who take advantage. During sea turtle nesting season, the beach fills up with lovers of this viscous delicacy. Hmm. There's also a place in this giant restaurant for vegetarians. Fresh, juicy fruits are also a delicious dish, and not just for dessert. Some birds are connoisseurs of fruits in season, and they flock to the trees that produce them. Birds of all shapes and sizes take advantage of their ability to fly to be the first to get to the fruits that no one else can reach. Some of these birds have evolved to become tireless consumers of all the fruits of the forest. They dine at the most fashionable restaurants, trees bearing the ripest, most delicious fruits. The collared aracari has a terrifying appearance. Looking at its serrated beak, You'd never think what it's after is fruit. But nevertheless, they're real connoisseurs of tropical fruits. Aracaris gather into small and loud groups that thoroughly search through the branches until they find what they're after, the sweet and nutritious fruits of trees and palms. Its enormous bill, which at first may look awkward and disproportionate, is actually an amazing tool. It's the most effective utensil for picking, grabbing, and eating the great variety of fruits the jungle has to offer. Lots and lots of capillaries and nerves run through the bill, not just making it extremely sensitive, but also allowing it to disperse heat when the temperature is high or when the bird exerts itself physically. Other birds enjoy a very different menu. A massive buffet that's absolutely free. The leftovers are available to anyone who wants to give them a try, just like food carts on the street. The streets, neighborhoods and dumps have become the favorite restaurants of the opportunist. These restaurants get a lot of customers, and despite the fact that they're ugly, disgusting, and even awful smelling, they're quite popular. Dumps are like gigantic fast food cafeterias. In fact, they're almost exactly like a buffet-style restaurant, 
where the food is offered in abundance and each customer can pick and choose whatever they want to eat. The buffet-style restaurant first appeared in France, but today they can be found all over the world. Dumps follow the same philosophy, offering the diners that visit them food of all kinds, and it's all you can eat every day. There are always new customers in line, but there's enough food for everyone in great variety and abundance. The hungry crowds of customers practically line up around the block, looking to satisfy their appetite. The dishes served are almost endless and extremely varied day by day. Coming to eat here is a real adventure and very convenient for millions of creatures. Just a few years ago, Iberian wolves discovered the free buffet dumps have to offer. It's risky to get too near the city, but they promise a very daily menu without having to hunt, which means exerting a great effort that may not yield any reward. For the wolves, Going out to eat at the dump means saving time and energy. The wild canids succumb to convenience. There's food to spare here. However, they opt for discretion and choose the night shift. After the numerous bands of birds leave, the wolves arrive at the restaurant just in time for dinner. It's all fast food at the dump. Just look around and you're sure to find something delicious in no time. Wolves are captivated by the quality of this junk food which is extremely tasty thanks to its fats, spices, and sugars. What they don't know is that these eating habits are really bad for your health. The consumption of food waste from fast food burger restaurants or industrial sweets causes obesity, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and cavities. Clearly, there are downsides to eating at this peculiar restaurant. But to the wolves, dumps, despite the health risks, have given them the chance to retake their old territories peacefully, passing completely under the radar. If they have to pay for the convenience with a few cavities, fine by them. Sea lions live on a very different diet. California sea lions have a hydrodynamic body with a layer of fat under their skin that provides them with insulation, heat, and buoyancy. Just by looking at them, you can tell it's true what they say. The fatter, the happier. Like many sea lion species, these are social, intelligent, and very playful animals that hunt fish, squid, and mollusks for food. Sea lions are the only mammals whose milk doesn't contain lactose. However, 
Its chemical composition is extremely complex and complete, which indicates that it is very important for the pup's nutrition. The pups look for their mother's nipples, which just barely peek out of her thick body. Female sea lions produce a milk with a particularly high energy value, so their young can grow up extremely quickly during the nursing period. The caloric content of sea lion's milk, like in most marine mammals, is much higher than that of land mammals. The nursing period is very intense as the pup needs to receive a massive amount of energy in a very short time in order to produce a layer of insulating blubber as soon as possible. Some sea lion's pups feed on a milk so rich in fat that it can make up to 60% of its composition. With so much fat, they gain about two kilos of weight per day, and their body weight quadruples by the end of the nursing stage. The fat in the milk forms a subcutaneous layer that protects them from low temperatures and also serves as a bodily reserve until they can feed independently in the sea. The tapir also drank milk when it was young, but now it prefers salads. Tapirs frequent the ground floor of the great restaurant we call the forest. Their food, unlike what one might expect of a vegetarian's diet, is surprisingly diverse. Tapirs are tropical forest-dwelling diners. They love nothing more than a refreshing bath followed by some jungle salad. Maintaining their weight, between 200 and 300 kilos, requires them to eat about 34 kilos of vegetable matter each day. The characteristic that stands out most of the tapir is its snout in the form of a little trunk, which it uses to pull the leaves, herbs, and roots it consumes. Tapirs have a compact, robust, and powerful body that lets them make their way through the jungle foliage without difficulty. Tapirs eat all the different parts of the plants, from the roots to the flowers, and they even eat palm hearts, one of their favorites, along with the fruits of many different trees and the numerous and large leaves of the tropical trees. In some areas, they disperse up to 33% of the vegetable species native to the places where they live, making them the great protectors of the tropical forests. They may look like clumsy animals by their weight and body structure, but in addition to being great swimmers and divers, they can climb the lower tree branches to reach the more appetizing leaves. They don't try to break the large, hard seeds with their powerful teeth. They just swallow them or spit them out. Trees like the mambin, the avocado, or the palm are very often dispersed by the tapir, which don't destroy the seeds when they include their fruits in their daily salad bar. After eating leaves for a while, it goes back to the water to refresh itself, although its intentions appear to be more scatological. They often defecate in rivers or streams, and the current carries the seeds in their droppings to faraway places where the trees can grow and colonize. Some animals aren't as excited about eating salad. 
they need to eat a good steak dinner. That means they get the energy they need to live from a diet consisting of the bodies of other animals, like the tapir. A strict carnivore is one that lives on an exclusive meat diet, but not all of them are the same. The diet of a hypercarnivore contains more than 70% fresh meat, while a hypocarnivore only ingests 30% or less meat. Eating means hunting. And in order to hunt, carnivores demonstrate a series of common characteristics, like powerful eyesight, sharp teeth or beaks, and strong hooked claws for capturing and dismembering their prey. Although there are numerous exceptions, such as snakes, which are able to hunt without claws or large teeth. Although carnivores are powerful, they don't live a life of luxury, and getting their daily steak isn't so easy. Hmm. The carnivorous diet is based on the ingestion of food derived from other animals. For some carnivores, this includes the eggs, a very complete food source. The ladder snake, which can reach over a meter and a half in length, lacks large teeth or claws, but it has its own weapons that make it a very respectable hunter. With its tongue, it's capable of detecting the most succulent traces in the field, like fresh laid stone curlew eggs. They'd make a great breakfast, but the parents aren't willing to abandon their nest. The snake doesn't want a pecking or a kicking from some angry bird parents. The Eurasian stone curlews display scared it off to look for food somewhere else. It's just a matter of time. The trails of smell invade the field. Sooner or later, it will find an appetizing aroma, like these bowls. But it looks like the rodents also detect the danger, and they run to their nest before the snake realizes what's going on. Maybe the afternoon will bring more luck. The snake not only has very developed senses, its attacks are also quick and well-aimed and its embrace is deadly. The ladder snake has no venom, but it is strong and agile, and its prey are caught off guard with no time to react. The mouse dies of asphyxiation and gets devoured.
The snake swallows its victims whole, unhinging its jawbones in order to ingest them. Its gastric juices will do the rest. The great restaurant of nature is open 24 hours. And there's almost always something to eat, something to put in your mouth, from fruit to dead bodies, from crunchy insects to fresh fish. There's nothing that can't be eaten, and everybody's hungry. So, bon appétit.